Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to your Easy Achievers Gaming Podcast special edition for the Game Awards. I'm one of your hosts, Elijah, sitting across from me digitally through the internet, of course, is Alex. Hello, everyone. How are you doing, Alex? I'm doing well. I've just been trying to play all these games. I found myself in a similar predicament by the way this is our special game awards so that we're going over every announcement and winners from the 2020s game awards this episode but before we get into that i want to check in with alex you said you've been going through some games yep can you divulge what they are um i finished assassins okay um and now i'm working through cyberpunk okay so you think i'm halfway through cyberpunk i've heard it's 28 hours Okay. So, like, are you, how, do you know roughly um, where you are? 14 hours in. 14. 14, 14 oh. Hours. oh, okay. Roughly half. Yeah. Okay. 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 I was surprised when I heard the story was 28 hours. Don't know what I was yeah. expecting, but I was there surprised. There is a lot of side content because, I, my God, like, I'm, I'm going to give it a, a quick thing. I'm over here just, just, like, I finished I finished a certain mission and I guess it's you know early in the game so it's just trying to introduce you everything. Literally right after I do a certain mission, I start driving and like things just keep popping up for side missions. Like but, I have like twenty side missions now. That sounds just like Witcher. Now is it as crazy as Witcher? In a Cause, sense, cause Witcher was in, pretty insane. In a s in a s it it can be, but it's not as big as Witcher. I think Witcher was far was like super, like so much bigger game. Okay. Like, like map wise, like I'm looking, I'm thinking back to the map in Witcher, and the map in Witcher was so much bigger in my, I feel like in my opinion. Hmm. I wonder um, what's been the biggest game by map because, size. It's weird too because I'm thinking of because I seen a thing the other day and it says that Cyberpunk's map is twice as big as GTA's. Ah. Uh, I don't maybe it's because it's more condensed instead of being like you know in like in GTA there was like a big desert area and mm-hmm. there was like the the, the city all in one mm-hmm. this is all just city so I can't really tell but I feel like it's smaller but I honestly I, I can't tell I always have the issue when we talk about game map size what mm. does that mean right like is it like mm. Square, like square yeah square like are, are is it measurable and what makes it bigger are we including buildings that you can go inside does that include like are we just talking map and not including any there's, other bonus things i could definitely say there's definitely a lot of things that you can interact with this game compared to mm-hmm. gta like with gta you could just walk by a building with this one you can walk in and like, literally talk to someone now, Alex, you did um, talk to me a little bit about this game a few days ago. You said something very interesting. You said a lot of genitalia. Oh, my God. So what's up with the genitalia in this game? Because I've heard a lot about this. Is there just literally I mean, penises everywhere? I'm, I, it's not that. It's not that it's that. It's for some reason, and I spoke to my wife about it too, why does every future dystopian have to revolve a, around sexual pleasure and it's just glorified mm. like like does everybody in the future just want to hook up with robots and mm-hmm. things like i don't understand because literally i'm i have to go to a certain area and this there's one certain area that's just all about this stuff like i'm literally walking by and there, there's literally a dodo shop okay i walk next to and then on the other side there is a uh, another like a sex shop and then across the room there or across the place there's like they're like there's like a like i, I don't want to call him a hooker but a, mm-hmm. a person that can give you pleasure mm-hmm. prostitute like it's like it's like it's crazy mm-hmm. interesting okay like, now it, i will it's, it's, it's really weird yeah so i will say that of course prostitution is a popular job but i'd be very i'm, I'm curious to play when i play the game if it's going to be jarring because I'm down with I'm down with exploring sexuality in video games, of course, right? And as long as it's even and not seemed to be centered around women like it tends to be, I'm a hundred percent. No, it's definitely everywhere. Yeah, that's and I feel like that's better than just seeing like it's no, sure. being the lowest common denominator being it's just always women. Mm-hmm. 
I'll be very interested to see if it's what's the word. Um, I don't want to say jarring again, but you know, the, rep, repulsive isn't the right word either. But you know, just all in my face. I'll be, uh, maybe there's a lot of penises. Maybe I'll enjoy it. I don't know. Maybe maybe I'll enjoy the vag in my face too. I don't it's know. not. It's not off-putting. Like it's not like to where like it's starts okay. to pop up. You're like, Oosh, maybe that's the word I was looking to, for. Like 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 it it doesn't feel that way. No, but it can it 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 can get overwhelming. So it sometimes, but it's like in a funny way. You're like, really, guys? Come on now. Interesting. Like, okay. It, but it, it's it, it's interesting. It's just, okay. It, it's like it can be bad, but it can be good. Okay. I I have so many questions I want to ask. But that will literally eat this entire podcast. So I think we should do a separate review in progress for Cyberpunk 2077 soon. And then we'll do a full spoiler cast when we both finish the game. Hopefully this year. I don't know if I'll be able to get to it this year. I hope so. I want to finish Assassins. I want to finish... Almost done. Yeah, I'm almost done. I'm 40 hours in. Um, Alex, what was your end game clock? Do you remember? 65. 60 okay all right i still oh jesus christ all right yeah i still got a good bit left of this game um i'm excited to, to play more i've hit a good spot where i'm enjoying myself and i've almost it's, good, it's, good. it's crazy that there's so much levels because i do feel like i almost have everything but i guess oh my god i finished and i literally stopped uh, like when i finished the game my skill level was 270 on the dot okay okay so that's where i was okay interesting all right, all right. I, i'm i'm excited i i'm excited i got everything like leveled up i'm using an axe and a hammer sometimes i switch and and i and i beat someone to death with a hammer sometimes i beat to the death with an axe it's very fun and, the, and by the way mm-hmm. really quickly anyone playing this game three things make sure you get rise of the valkyrie level two that breaks every bar door in the game you could just break the game second ability get the oh god proximity fire trap that blows up any red boulder area so you don't have to find the vases that are red in the game yep. that makes this the yeah, those two th- those two things make this game a hundred percent better third thing alex i don't know if you found this out there's an ability with the hunter bow in the game that if you equip mm-hmm. the hunter bow there's it's called a charged shot you load two arrows into the hunter bow and it, if you hit a critical hit on their head, you do an insane amount of damage. I have killed things way higher than my level by just critting them. Every crit shot with that ability does probably half to a third of their health every single time. I have killed every single like boss in this game with that move now, since I've unlocked it. It is insanely overpowered. <laughs> if you want to be OP, get those three abilities... You'll have a fun time. I enjoyed myself way better when I didn't have to worry about barred doors and red rocky uh, areas. Much better game. It's funny because I, the red rocky areas, I didn't even think, like, I, I did the little tutorial one where it says, like, oh, you know, if you grab uh, the, the oil oil face, throw it. But I didn't, I did that that one time. Mm-hmm. And then when I got my ability, that char- that uh, proximity thing, I'm like, why don't I just use this? And I immediately just use that. And I'm I, like, let me see if that works. And I used it and it worked. So I was like, oh, so I didn't, for the rest of the game. I didn't think of it as a bomb. I thought of it as fire. So it didn't make sense for me to use it against the boulder. But as soon as you said that, I, I was like, it. okay, use it. It's straight up a bomb. And I'm like, oh my God, yes. Yeah. The only reason I found out that I, or at least I gave, got the idea is because I shot it at somebody and they exploded. I'm like, is it a bomb? And then I, when I got to the next area and I needed one, I was like, I'm going to try this. Thing. Thank God you told me that. I literally would have never used that ability ever. Ever. <laughs> never would have used it. So thank God you told me. Yeah. I think that c- completes of what we've been playing. Uh, I've done a lot of Destiny. Not, nothing fun to talk about there. I want to get into Dragon Quest. But I am so busy with Assassins trying to beat that. I'm, I want to finish Assassins before I go on to anything else. So Dragon Quest and Cyberpunk are what I want to beat before the end of the year. I don't have much longer, so I might not make that. But we'll see. Alex? Mm -hmm. Let's get into this. Now, I wanted to go over announcements first. Does that sound right for you? Okay. That's fine. Does that sound good? Okay, we're going to go over announcements, then we'll go over winners. I may skip a few if they don't make sense, or I'll just lightly go over it. There's a lot of games here that not necessarily me and Alex care about, but I will at least state what it is. 
first announcement comes up, and, and of course the Game Awards 2020 uh, went live last. God, jeez, help me, Alex. It was Friday or Thursday. It was the tenth Thursday. Thank you. It was Thursday. Great time. I watched it live. Alex, did you watch it? Yes, I did. Okay, we'll we'll do a slight review after all this, but I enjoyed myself. Um, so we'll we'll go over our actual thoughts of the event once we're done with this. All right, first thing. Devolver Digital announces Loop Hero. Very interesting. Um, I liked the look of the game. I love Devolver Digital, so I'll be interested to see. It's a retro RPG with deck-building elements. Interesting. Okay. I'll try that when it comes out. Sea of Solitude, which is a game I've wanted to try, is coming to Switch. Uh, it's s- uh, set for March 4th. It looks a lot like a, uh, a Telltale game mixed with like a Gone Home sort of, sort of, ga- sort of vibe, and I'm yeah. excited for it. Now, for the, I, I kind of got a little upset with this okay. because the lady comes out mm-hmm. and she's like, oh, Sea of Solitude will be available th- this holiday. But then when it <laughs> comes out, it says March 4th. Oh, I think she she definitely foot. That was definitely a foot and mouth situation then. Cause, uh, yeah, cause I wonder if she just I wonder if she day, thought that oh, you'll be able to get it. Then we'll be able to get a holiday. <laughs> And then it's that's pretty fun fourth. and i'm like but march 4th yeah like so i was a little like i'm like really like that's oh wow crazy. she uh yeah she definitely erred on that one I, I assume she knows that's not actually holiday maybe she heard something else or just mm. was you know it's it's kind of uh overwhelming right being in front of a bunch of people knowing that you have to say a sentence so maybe maybe she said that maybe they changed it like at like at last second i don't know, May- I don't know. maybe maybe um there was century age of ashes announced it was a world premiere it is a dragon flying combat game now i didn't miss this game but it's but i've heard it's like skyrim esque and it it looks a lot like that crimson dragon game (laughs) that alex really likes at xbox one launch for some reason it reminded me of crimson dragon and i was about to say oh my god so Elijah, i'm gonna play this and he's gonna be like you probably will because you played that you probably will crimson dragon game. oh my god the achievements nah, were good no, but i see, couldn't I make i it. couldn't make myself yeah, I now i was excited about this one this is when i tuned in like fully to watch watch setharoth mm-hmm. alex say it with me setharoth <laughs> it joins smash brothers which is like oh, okay cool that was definitely one of the people i've always wanted but just assumed i'd never get I will say mm-hmm. a little underwhelming because we have Cloud already. You know what I mean? Like, we've already gotten someone from Final Fantasy VII, so it's like, oh, we're just getting, they like, did, another they, one. They That's did nice. try to hype up that trailer a lot, though. They did. They did. I mean, it, they, they spent a good bit of time on that trailer, too. Like, And they also stabbed Mario in the chest. Mm-hmm. Not really, but, you know, it looked like it, it was really cool. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was really hilarious. <laughs> um... Uh, so this is when I, my jaw dropped. I wasn't expecting this. Now I knew this game was being made from a trusted source. Uh, so from the initiative. So this is one of Xbox studios, brand new studios that they made. Um, and they're making a perfect dark game. They, they showed the trailer, showed like an overview of the game. Now I did not play the original, so I don't have a reference for this, but it looks awesome. It looks really cool. And it looks like they're trying to make like a... I don't want to say like an Uncharted or anything, but like they, it looks like they want to make a Xbox it's a, character. It's like, a mission, it's like a Mission Impossible type thing. It looks really cool. It, yeah, it, yeah, it's it, they're trying to make it to where she's she's uh what is it? um a uh, mascot. God, um, she's a mascot. A yeah, mascot. mascot yes. Yeah. yeah. Now the team says they describe it as an Echo shooter. I don't know. I don't. That's a great question. I have no idea what that means. Um, Echo shooter economy is that what it stands for? Economy shooter? No, no way, right? E C O dash shooter. I'll have to look that up later. I have no idea. And they premiered essentially Left for Dead. <laughs> like that, I mean, oh it's I'm called so it's called Back for Blood. This is Turtle Rock. This is from the founder. Um, of the valve who worked on the original left for dead games left made a new studio that was and basically was like if you're not going to make left for dead i'm going to go make left for dead and they are making they're making left for, this game please if you haven't watched the trailer go watch it just so even if you don't care about left for dead and just know what it is 
it is unabashedly not afraid of just straight up being left for dead it, like you could have told me this was left for dead oh. vid footage and i would have believed you like the safe room is the same Oh, everything's the same. Like, almost like, everything. Like, there's bigger mo there's bigger zombies. Yeah, there's different it's types of zombies. Even the four is a thing still. It, the, they, they put a four in it? I was like, yeah. okay. I mean... It's just a, it's just a new name. It's I like, want... It's like, remember Gods and Monsters? They just changed the name, and it's now Immortal Phoenix Rising. So, it's like, <laughs> instead of Left 4 Dead 3, they're like, no, we're not going to use that name. We're going to yeah. use a new name. Yeah. Uh, I, yeah, I would... um, Like, I would make fun of this game more but i respect you know, how like straight up they're being where they're like we're like we're left for dead like i I, res I respect it because for years i've said please make someone copy suikoden and make it someone's finally doing it i can't like be a hypocrite and be like oh don't copy games no 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 if you're gonna do it man and they're not making the game go ahead go mm -hmm. go ahead while you're at it make more suikoden games I got one coming, and yeah, now I'm greedy. Me too. Now I'm greedy. Yeah, I'll, sure, I'll play it. Fine. I'll play it for like a mm -hmm. few days. The alpha uh, was announced coming out June 22nd. No, I'm sorry. 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 So the game, the game releases June 22nd. Mm -hmm. The, the alpha, alpha is, next is next week, December 17th. Pretty wild. That's pretty cool. So you'll get to kind of like experience like the game in early days, all buggy and stuff. That sounds fun. This game is another. If you ain't gonna make it, we're gonna make it ourselves with a different name. <laughs> if you like Dead Space, don't worry. You're gonna love this next game. This is the world premiere of Callisto Protocol. This That's is by it. this is by Striking Distance Studios. This was Glenn Shelfield, who who was the game director for Dead Space. Um, I think one, two, and three, if I remember correctly. I think he was there for all three. I don't remember. Um, but he he, he left and took the oh who else was it it was another one of the heads so it's two people who worked straight up on dead space yeah Aren't... i just said it's from the creators of dead space yeah it's two of the it's two of the creators coming and they're making it's again look <laughs> look at this trailer it's dead they're making dead space it's it's the exact it's same thing the, literally it's called a terrifying story driven survival horror game set in a prison colony on jupiter's dead moon callisto that sounds as soon as i saw awesome. the neck thing on the guy at the green thing i'm like dead space that's what i thought too and i was like but they don't have the cojones to make but so i was like it's not them so i i'm glad that someone who knows what they're doing is just they're like we're making it again we're making it again oh the the creative executive is, is glenn Schofield and steve uh, Papa, that's I forgot how to say it. I, I couldn't say his name. I'm pretty sure Steve is the one who also worked on the game. So so it's both yeah. crea pre creators basically, original creators. Mm -hmm. Fulbright it coming back at me with this next premiere. Fulbright, if you don't know, made um, Tacoma and Gone Home, and they're making Open Roads. So this is straight up like a Tacoma like game where it is a. Um, uh, adventure game where you're following the protagonist going through like a road trip in a super nice art style and it stars Carrie Russell and Caitlin Dever now I'm not a huge actor actress person that's more Alex's territory so if Alex are those, if those are famous people please give me a heads up I honestly don't know okay I, Carrie Russell sounds very familiar she also does to me as well is it bad, is it bad that I want to say Kurt Russell's wife, but I just because it's Russell, I mean, I, I don't want. You're to just, ass, yeah, you're just assuming, it. right? So I, I don't know. Now I will. Let me see. Quickly. Oh, oh yes, okay. I know who Carrie Russell is. Who is it? Um, she played. I don't know if you would know her. Let me see if I. I she was definitely. It, 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 just for the audience, just say like some popular things for so just in case she people. She was something. Are. She was in. She, she was in Star Wars. She was in Mission Impossible. She was in Dawn of Planet of the Apes. Okay, okay. Um, so she's in a. She was, she's a talented she was, actress. She was Zori Bliss in Rise of Skywalker. Mm, I'll pretend to know who that is. Um, Do and you this and. The, uh, never mind. I'll. I'll, I'll We'll leave it for later. Okay. Caitlin Dever was in a couple movies. Book Smart, which I heard was really good. Unbelievable. She was in that TV show Justified. 
Uh, Bad Teacher, Short Term 12, Detroit. These are a couple of games I've heard, or sorry, movies I've heard of. Uh, Modern Family. So she's the, the mentalist, curb your enthusiasm. So uh, she's very uh, pop, uh, famous. So it looks like they got talent for sure. Like they, they've yeah. got heavy talent on this. Good for them. Now they can afford this. Mm. Now, Disco Elysium, uh, Final Cut, coming to PlayStation and PC. Uh, this is the definitive edition. New political quest, more characters, full voice acting for everyone. Standard edition, collector's edition, now available to pre-order. Coming March 2021. It's finally coming to consoles. Um, PS5 no P- and PS4. No Xbox, unfortunately. Um, I heard this was a really good game, but I also heard these they're like straight up like com- communist enthusiasts, which kind of turns me off. Mm. Uh, yeah. But I might play the game just to see what everyone talked about because uh, I, I should I should be able to divorce on, like people's thoughts from the actual art. I they wonder created. why it's on everything but Xbox. Because it's on Steam, um, App Store, cl- Epic, Stadia, PlayStation. Alex, clearly they're communists. Communists hates Xbox. If you didn't know that, so if I I don't know if it's true, but I think they have like a picture of like like, like I don't I'm not I'm not gonna get into that right now. Never mind. <laughs> I I've, I've heard they've had a picture of of like a communist in their office and i don't know if that was a joke or not or if that was actually serious and if that's for real i, I don't know if i can buy the game but <laughs> we'll see we'll see but i did hear it was a really good game and it has a lot of satire and it makes fun of um uh, uh i think it's like heavily makes fun of capitalism which i'm down to to have my views challenged so i should i should play the game i might play the game when it comes out mm. ps5 march okay eh, i might, might, might buy it i don't know Alex. No, what we really cared about. Alex. Are you are, are you ready, Alex? Mm, Dragon Age? Am I ever ready? Dragon Age, Alex? Mm-hmm. Now, are you we keep calling it Dragon Age 4. Are we really calling it Dragon Age 4? Well, we have to until they tell us what it is, right? That's true. Well, they well the title only said Dragon Age. That's it. The, the, I don't think they've set a title yet, in my opinion. Like, I think they're just saying, like, that's, there's a new Dragon Age game coming, like, not stating what is... they showed the title. Right. Did they, though? Is they, that officially they, announced? Yeah, the animation, the actual, the actual title, yeah. It's so it's Dragon called Age. Dragon Age. I figured, yeah, I figured... I thought, okay. I mean, I, that's what the animation, you know, when they show yeah. new titles, they, they would have the full title on there, unless they changed the name. I mean, now, so I... I think that's the name. No, I mean, I guess that, I mean... I guess it makes sense, right? They, they, it's not like they have had another game called Dragon Age before. Like, just Dragon Age. It's always been uh, colon yeah, something or two. Dragon Origins. Yeah. So, uh, you know, it's not crazy for them to do it. Mm. I can't... I mean, I'm excited for the game. Can't say anything other than... I'm excited because they don't really show anything, unfortunately. They showed, like, a really cool yeah. cinematic. They showed the Dread Wolf um they are kind of talking to us in a way um the trailer speaks of no more prophecies no more magic hands it the story is just you and i believe they're basically saying that they're going back to an origins style character where you get solos uh yeah we're killing solos probably um but you're gonna make a character you're gonna make a backstory you're gonna start the game probably recruit people and stuff so maybe they're trying to say like they're going back to basics now this in another game we'll talk about later um it's important to say that the studio just went under incredible shakeups with their heads leaving um katie hudson and uh, oh god I'm, I'm blanking on the other gentleman's name i apologize but i'll, I'll get that later but two of their huge producers left so i'm hoping that doesn't destroy this game because that's not, never good to hear. Because they, because what I love about this is they joined like a year or two ago, and now they're leaving again. So it's like, okay, all right. Well, you left, came back, and now you're leaving again. So I don't have much of an opinion. I'm ex- I'm still excited. Alex, do you have anything else? No, yeah, I'm, no, yeah, I'm definitely excited to play it. It actually makes me want to go back and play the Dragon Ages because I actually never beat the first one myself. Uh, I always beat two and Inquisition, but I've never actually beaten one, so I actually mm, do want to go should. back 
it's a fantastic story. Now they I do. Just, I just know that if it's different. You, you do have to remember that it is a rough game, and they made instead of focusing I mean, on like Mass Effect One rough. No, uh, God, uh, no, because I would say <laughs> Mass Effect One's a little stilted and jarring, whereas Dragon Age Origins. Although it looks a little rough around the edges if you're looking at it critically now. In the time, it still mm-hmm. looked good, and how big the game was was impressive with how much it, how well it looked. And you'll probably run into yeah. some weird things happening, and there's still it's still a little buggy. I'm hoping they make a collection like they did with Dragon Age. They would be yeah. silly not to. So hopefully they do. South Korean developer Pearl Abyss. Reveals a new next-gen open-world game called Crimson Desert. Now, I did miss this one. I, I got busy with something. Alex, can you give me a synopsis of what you think and what you saw? It, from what it looks like, it's an open-world... Uh, I don't know what time frame would it be, but it's like it looks more like very Viking-ish. Um, I mean, I could say Anglo-Saxon, but I don't want to be wrong. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's, it's, it's an open-world... Well, it's it's an MMORPG, and it's set in the Viking type uh, world because there's on a, there's monsters, there's dragons, um, there's a uh, the armors look pretty cool and like they definitely showed this game to be very um, what's the word pretty because. I, there would be some points where in the where they were showing off the landscape, and my god, it looked like I thought I was looking at a real thing. So like water and everything. I also heard this as well that it was pretty insane how good it looked. Yes. Which is good. Yes. Which is good, like like that being the immediate takeaway um, is exciting. And it's, it, yeah, no, it's it's people, and it's it is by this it, Pearl Abyss. It is by the same people who did Black Desert. Yes, with, that's right. You know, all the other, yeah, it is by the other people. Yeah, they did Black Desert online, and I Black Desert a little bit, and I was enjoying it. It was pretty fun. It's a, it was more of a fantasy type, um, MMORPG mm-hmm. instead of being. I don't know if I guess I, I guess you can count this as a fantasy, but the other one had more like magic and yeah kind of like on high 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 fantasy i think it's what it's called when it's like over the top fantasy yeah yeah but uh yeah but i'm excited to see what they come with uh because i saw the name and i was like i wonder if this is by the same people and it, it, it is alex i don't think you care about this next announcement but i i definitely like smiled a little bit because i i do have a respect for um the muppets now they announced the swedish chef is going to be an overcooked which sounds amazing mm-hmm. and then, now uh jeff Keeley loves uh the muppets so he always has them on like every year doing something and this was his thing so you can download for free now <clears throat> the swedish chef and play him in an overcooked that's awesome i cannot wait for that yeah, I told my wife, and uh, uh, she gave me a, a dirty look because mm. I didn't play Overcooked with her. Oh, yeah, yeah. So I was, Unfortunately. Was like, it's not like I get to play it anyway. I was like, oh. Like, just I, a reminder. I, I, it, I, I just, I just, I, I can't. <laughs> I just, I just I can't. can't. <laughs> <laughs> moving on because I, get, I, get, I get frustrated i want to <laughs> make sure everything's right and if it doesn't get right i get frustrated it's well, too much one day we should do a let's play of overcooked it, and, and everyone can watch it's, you just evolve into nothing it's it's bad because if i don't get it and it starts to frustrate me i get as frustrated as i do get with dark souls <laughs> like overcooked it's, it's, dark souls point. edition yeah it gets to a point where i'm just like done it's hilarious Moving on to something that we don't care about, but I think I know is super popular, so I want to make sure to uh, drink it. War I've been trying to. I've been trying to. <laughs> Warframe is now available on the Epic Games Store for anyone interested. I believe that is still a free to play game, so you can just download it for free if you want to. Mm-hmm. Also, you can download now and claim exclusive Unreal Tournament weapon bundle for free until December 24th. So if you get it through the Epic Games Store, you can redeem that Unreal Tournament bundle, which is pretty cool. We have to try this game. 
I will eventually, but like, there's just too, there's just too many games. I feel like especially, I feel like especially you would love it just because it's so it's a lot like Destiny. I've heard a lot of Destiny people when Destiny was on their off season or it just wasn't as good, they went and played Warframe, mm -hmm. um, and a lot of people went and yep. played um, uh, the super popular Genshin Impact. A lot of people moved to that too. Yes, I, yeah. Um, I played Warframe when it was first released on the systems, and it was not as good as it is now. Because I've seen gameplay of now, oh my god, it looks so different. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. it just I've heard it's just so it gotten so much better. So I feel like it need it, it, I I need to give it like some time just to try it because I feel like it, well, it to give it the benefit of the doubt. I mean, you can have your own ship now and stuff. Like there's like crazy stuff yeah. now that is that sounds really cool in theory. Now, I don't know if in practice I play it and actually care, but Man, exciting I'm stuff. Space Ninja? Yeah, Space Ninja, yeah. I mean, I'm already a space wizard in Destiny, so maybe being a Space Ninja would be cooler. Call of Duty premiered season 1 of their Warzone for Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War. It's still a title that I can't get used to. Um, their first season will debut uh, December 16th. Uh, it teased the new map, the m more guns, more Jeeps, some more gameplay, and looks mm. like Call of Duty. Not too much to yeah, say. It looks, the looks fun. Yeah, it looks, looks fun. I'll definitely try it when it comes out, but I never really stuck with Call of Duty. I would play it in spurts and then just never touch it again. So I'll probably yeah. do the same thing with this, honestly. I already beat the like story, so I, I have no interest in coming back. <laughs> Season coming to PS Five. This is the developers of um uh did they make a um, a Darwin project? That's right. They made Darwin Scavenger Studios, and it's looks beautiful. I cannot wait for this game. I I will definitely try it. I don't think it got a date, but I cannot wait for this game. There wasn't too much to say. Because it's just kind of like, here's the game, all right, bye. Uh, so yeah. I'm excited. Now this next, <laughs> oh my god, <laughs> this next announcement, it was, I was just like, what is happening? Because <laughs> first off, I, and I don't want to be that guy, but it was like super long, and I just was like not caring. But this, so Vin Diesel shows up out of nowhere, animated and in like a trailer. And at first, I thought it was Horizon Zero Dawn, and I was like, no way, this is Horizon, right? And then I see Vin Diesel walk out, and I'm like, please, for the love of God, not believe Horizon Zero Dawn. And then I quickly became obvious it wasn't. So I was looking, at like, okay, what's happening? And then I was like, is this Ark? And I was like, but Ark, like, is this an expand? Like, I got like, confused on what this would even be. And they announced yeah. Ark 2, which I don't even know, like, how that, it, like, works. But, I mean, we're getting an Ark 2. It's cool. It's weird because I can't tell if it's... Um it's i don't understand if it's a, if this is gonna be multiplayer as well or if it's gonna be just like a, like a story because they got a lot of big people they got vin diesel gerard butler and elliot page well they got those two for the animated series right so i yeah. is vin diesel's I wonder if it'll tie in. i'm sure i mean I'm, I'm sure it is um but vin diesel's character i assume is in the actual game because it says no, it no, stars yeah, yeah, him that's in the game yeah so cool i don't care about arc and i'm not playing this game but i that i hope that makes arc people excited yeah good for them question mark next thing fall guys ultimate knockout next season was shown um it's wintry the season begins january 15th which is weird because it's wintry and kind of christmasy but yeah. who cares who cares the people who love it will love it enjoy i want to be a penguin but i would probably have to play the game to get the penguin so i don't know I don't know if I'm gonna do that. Yeah, I know I missed out on Godzilla, and I was not about to get ten wins. I only, I only have two. <laughs> you suck. <laughs> Moving on, Evil Dead the game. <laughs> Evil Dead the game uh, was revealed. I was definitely expecting this to be Dead by Daylight, and then it said its own game, and I was very confused. Uh, but this is a, I guess, a multiplayer game. Doesn't really talk much about it. It shows Ash. Yeah. I'm guessing this is going to be a mix between Friday the 13th or Predator style gameplay, maybe? Maybe Left 4 Dead a little bit in there, too? I don't know, but hey, Evil Dead's making a game. Cool? Question mark? Is this something you want? I don't know. 
I've never even watched the movie, so I I, I don't really care. I never, I've watch never watched a movie, never watched a show. If there's a show, no, I, never, I don't know anything about this. Perfect. Moving on. Uh, something that got me excited: Ghosts and Goblins is getting a remake and it's coming to Switch. Now, I love the original Ghosts and Goblins. It is a notoriously hard video game for the um, NES that it came out, and it's just like a fun, just like beat you in the teeth game, and uh, it looks cool. But I will say this remake doesn't look great. I don't know why they chose this art style. Maybe it was cheap. But it's coming uh, February 26th to Nintendo Switch. And I'll probably try it, but my god, it, it looks it doesn't look great. Um, but yeah. what, made, what made me even more excited... Yeah, I don't think you would care about this. Um, oh, what made me more excited, though, is the CampCon Arcade Collection is coming in February. Um... So, in the fine print, it did say that 1943, the Battle of Midway, will be free, but other titles will be separate. So, most likely, you'll get that game for free. And then there's going to be DLCs for each game that you buy. Which, whatever. I'll buy it. My, my Microsoft Flight Simulator Xbox Series X Summer 2020. This is essentially just reaffirming, because they did state this was already coming out for the Xbox Series X. And they're just going over again, like, hey, it's it's still coming. Just, you know, hold off. It's still coming. And this was just a reminder. It's stunningly beautiful. Um, <clears throat> stunningly beautiful, this game, Microsoft Flight Simulator. So I can't... I, I This is one of those games where it's coming to Game Pass, so I'll download it, play it for probably two hours, and then just never touch it again. But it looks really cool. I'd definitely try it. Like, I just want to see if I can go to, like, old areas where I, like, because I used to live in Miami. I want to drive to my fly to Miami. And That'd be cool. See if I can find the areas. Well, what's crazy is you can actually, like, fly into the place and look at stuff, which is... Mm-hmm. I which I can't even compute in my brain, but like you can just fly down and look at actual places. Well, you can go to a certain extent because I've seen the computer version, and you can if get to a certain thousand feet, everything becomes like flat, and it looks like it's like you're on Google Maps. It looks weird, so you're not supposed to go up below a certain height. But maybe they maybe they fix well, that. Well, you can't. You can. I think that's just what it looks like when you're high up. Because I've seen pic- plenty of pictures of like people flying like near like like Australia and looking at the Opera House and like stuff that's, like that. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like I think they've fixed it, but like early when this game first came out, like when you got really really low, it's just certain things where it just looked like it was like just flat. Now I don't know how it works. So I, I mean I could be wrong. Now I know there's a mode. I don't know if this is gonna make to this console version. I know there's a mo- mode called real time. Which is mm-hmm. will straight up simulate an actual flight time to somewhere. So in theory, if I wanted to go to New York, it would take the actual flight time. I think which is like an hour and a half or something, or two hours, something like that. Why would I want that? <laughs> I mean, dude, people love this game. Like, like flight simulators. Like, people love piloting, especially. And I've, I, one time I saw on Reddit like this, a person that was in like flight school practiced with flight simulator he bought like a pc and, and like the flight stick and he would practice at home which mm. which i mean people love this stuff so i i always i have a respect for the flight simulators nothing not, not something i'd actually honestly probably actually would get into though okay. alex mm. something i'm excited for this is made by housemark if you know housemark they made a bunch of arcade type um from uh isometric shooters uh, next monkey, uh, next monkina, and uh, God, what was that other? Uh, God, what was it called? I don't remember the name, but they made a bunch of top-down arcade shooters, and they're making a PS5 exclusive called Returnal, coming March nineteenth. Mm-hmm. Very, very excited about this. I will definitely play this. They didn't show too much gameplay, but it looks like it switches to third person more than actual top-down shooting. Uh, but it looks like it's a like keep dying and keep repeating type game because if you remember the original trailer showed her like in a time loop mm-hmm. and i'm down for that maybe it's like every time every time you die like something either adds or changes to your to time i believe that was like the thing because it was slightly different every time she crash landed or something like that mm-hmm. but we'll only know when the game comes out probably yeah. um and haze light games announces takes two this yeah, looked like a uh, oh, it, it, it takes two. Sorry, I must have yes. wrote it down incorrectly. It, it's it takes two. 
coming out soon-ish, I think. March 26th, yeah, so pretty soon. Two-player story-driven co-op game, which is what they make. They made a way out. So it makes sense they make this. So it looks like a... what Almost like... um. Honey, I Shrunk the Kids mixed with like a rom like a rom com almost because it's because it looks funny, but it look, but they're trying they have to fix their relationship in order to like become normal again. It looks super fun, and it looks like like the game you would a hundred percent play with like a significant other yeah. or your yeah. best friend named Alex. Maybe that too. <laughs> But we have to fix our relationship. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we'll have to fix our relationship. It's damaged. Uh, I guess I guess I'll be the female. Well, it's it's one of those things where I wonder if if you ask like your significant other to play this, if they would read into it too much, because then they figure out that the game is about a relationship having a problem, and they're like, "Is this like a message or something?" <laughs> that would be a hilarious situation to put yourself in. <laughs> As Elder Scrolls Online next expansion was announced, it's Gates of Oblivion. So they're going back to like an oblivion type setting, which is very cool. I was watching this because I've I've been wanting to get into these expansions and I just can't because I got right. that Skyrim on the last one. Yeah, I played it for maybe a good couple hours. I didn't care for it. For some reason, as soon as I saw this trailer, as soon as I saw the book started like burning a symbol, I was like, "Oh, it's oblivion! Oh, it's oblivion!" And I it, saw it, and I was like, "I don't know why, but I love oblivion, and I'm really <laughs> invested in this." I will say it did take me back. Interesting, not having like too too much like to pull myself to that game. Just seeing that symbol light up, and then the the symbol uh, solidify into the title, I was like, "Oh, that got me excited." And I don't know why. I, I, it just just that yeah. symbol was just well, so exciting. Was the first Elder Scrolls that I ever played, so I think it's probably like a nostalgia thing. Yeah, I probably like, I right. Like I have I have to try to see what this expansion is about of course right they didn't give much honestly in in the same of details it comes 2021 just sometime 2021 mm-hmm. probably late yeah. 2021 now we get a look at the new monster hunter game uh rise and it's getting a demo mm-hmm. it comes out uh, it got a trailer it's coming out um march 20 sorry the demo comes out january the game comes out march 26th it's for all you Monster Hunter people out there. Enjoy. I am not one of them, but I'm but I, so excited for you guys. Enjoy it. Cannot get into that. Can't game. get into it. It was hugely popular, though. The, the, the Hunt, Monster the, Hunter um, world. People yeah, loved think, that oh game, God. man. People loved Monster Hunter. get into it. It is, it, dude. It's it's one of those games where like, n- like no one knows about, but like the people who know about it, they like hardcore play that game. Yeah. Like I had a friend who played like four hundred hours of that game. I I would like what do you even do but like respect respect to you guys. Mm-hmm. Evil West was announced next. A new western game called Evil West was announced. Looks like an action game. Looks like you're fighting some sort of demon de- demonic mm-hmm. creatures. This is made by uh the Snowrunner Studio uh, Snowrunner Studios. It looks I like. really thought it was a Van Helsing game. Comes out next year. I I literally told my wife this looks like a Van Helsing game because she loves Van Helsing. I was like, come look at it. And then it said Evil West, and I was like, okay, maybe it's not. Sorry. <laughs> so yeah, I was I like... Got, I got a little disappointed when it wasn't. Yeah, me too. But it looks like they're essentially saying it's Van Helsing, but they can't use the name, so maybe that's the vibe they're going for. It's Dan Spelding. <laughs> Damn it, Alex. Damn it. <laughs> Why did that make me laugh? <laughs> Moving on. Um, Among Us is getting a new map, which is... Uh, super awesome good for them they're getting a new map they showed off the airship which looks awesome and it looks like they have um like new killing animations because the guy like shot a laser out of his eye because he was like half robot that looked really cool uh and i didn't see this so i must have missed it maybe i was talking with the wife or something but they have a jeff Keeley mask (laughs) that you can get through twitch i didn't see that but that sounds terrifying that's that sounds terrifying and yeah, then, um, go it's ahead. Cr- it's crazy how this game has gotten so big. It's one of those things where I wanted to play, but it's one of those games that point out that how few friends you have. Mm-hmm. Where they're like, are, like the real challenge of the game is finding nine people that want to actually play a video game with you, which is a yeah. tall task depending on who you are. And I was like, I can get maybe three or four. And ten? Yeah, I don't know about that. that. In around like, probably like 2004, 2006, and I would have been fine. Now, that's true. Now. Yeah, that's true. Now, now it's like, uh, no, no, no. Like, around Halo 3 time, I would have been just fine. That's true, yeah. If it was popular back in the day with, like, when I had, like, 
like a thousand friends that I can invite on Xbox 360 or something, yeah, I could probably get that mm-hmm. together. One versus 100, let's go. Alex, more money is being siphoned out of my wallet as we speak. Master Chief was announced for Fortnite, which, yes, yes. And Daryl and Michonne from The Walking Dead. cool like that like i was not expecting the I, people. me either i was it was one of those things where i was like whoa, whoa what like i blinked and went like, what daryl and and i was like okay cool yeah i'll take it but uh i immediately bought master chief of course got all of his stuff got his little bundle very exciting they didn't really show much other than that um they just reminded you that new season's out and stuff like that and then i just made me want to go watch red versus blue <laughs> <laughs> yeah red versus blue yeah i do too i kind of want to go watch it. i used to watch it as a kid I, I i didn't really watch it much but i watched a little bit of it i do want to go back and watch mm-hmm. them um and then a little xbox game pass half basically an advertisement but they announced a few stuff elder scrolls skyrim is out i believe now on oh no sorry that's december 15th so in two days skyrim comes out and then uh, they are announcing that Yakuza 3, 4, 5 Remastered are all coming soon. And then they remind you that you can play EA Play on the console. Yeah, there's a lot of games coming to uh, Game Pass in, this, in the near future. They just keep screaming. Like, like it's still coming. They're still yeah, coming. What, like, there's still a million PC, games on here. Uh, we were just talking about Among Us. Among Us will be part of Game Pass. Uh, for I, forgot, I forgot about that. That's true, yeah. That's true. It's coming so to Game Pass. If anybody has Game Pass, you'll be able, you won't have to pay for it because the mobile one's free, but not the PC one. So yeah, the PC's five Game bucks. Pass, you can just get it. Yeah. That, I mean, Game Pass c- c- continue to be insane, insane every single day, it seems like. They're just going to add everything. Yeah, every, eventually, everything will be on Game Pass. The game. War premiere Ruined King, a legend, uh, sorry, a League of Legends story. So this is still there because they announced that project thing they did where like they gave mm-hmm. a bunch of studios the League of Legends license to make spinoff games. And this is just another one. This is a single player League of Legends spinoff Ruined King. Um, and this was revealed at last year's Game Awards, which I didn't know that. Um, but it looks like it's a turn based RPG scheduled early 2021 uh, coming to consoles and PC, including Switch cool yeah if i still played uh, league i'd be more interested in it i just I, it's been so long since i played league i tried going back to it about two months ago and everything's totally different i'm just like i don't want to relearn all this right now i'll, I'll do it another day see i can definitely and get I in that day's ever gonna come see i can definitely get into it if they give me games like this like i won't ever no, sure. i won't ever play league of legends but I will play like spinoffs when it's a single player or turn based RPG. That sounds really fun. Yeah. I'll definitely yeah, do that. I do like that because I want to learn more about the characters. 100%. So it does give me that opportunity. 100%. I'm excited for this. Alex. I'm pretty sure you heard me scream from your house because we don't live too far away. Pretty sure you heard me scream when this next thing was announced. They teased the new Mass Effect game. Now, I will say, not too much was actually spoken about it. And we already no. knew it was coming, so nothing crazy was actually announced, but... Mm. But we did get something confirmed. They showed me my girl. They showed me Liara. They, they gave it to me. They showed me it. Now, we could, I could talk to you literally an hour with just what they showed us, Alex. Yeah. So I won't do that here. Maybe we'll do that some other time. But there's a new Mass Effect game coming, and I'm losing my mind. No, for sure. And it could potentially be in the Shepherdverse? It, well, it's for sure in the Shepherdverse, right? Because they showed Andromeda in the foreground. or No, sorry, yeah. background. That's the background. Sorry. The foreground was shown to uh, our Milky Way galaxy. And then they mm-hmm. went into the Milky Way galaxy. And then they showed us the timeline of Mass Effect, showing us that, hey... You know, here's when we went to the moon. Here's when we uh, got the first contact wars with the Turians. Here's when we um, fought the Reapers. Here's when all the mass relays were explo- exploded. And now every system is segregated from each other because they can't transport or communicate because there's no way of getting to them now because every Reaper made thing is now dead. Um, yep. 
So this is ex- insanely exciting. It's crazy because I, I I was trying to watch the this trailer, but I, I at the same time I would couldn't realize what it was at first, and then I started noticing little things. Like I didn't notice like during the little. Uh, snow scene in the distance when the per- the of course it's the R but we didn't know at the time uh, they were she was climbing up the mountain you can see a dead reaper in the background mm-hmm. yeah there's a dead reaper like sitting there like like a part a part of the uh well I guess you could say landscape because it's like it's like yeah, sat yeah, there it's in the background so yeah here we go like this is it like we're getting like we're getting it there there's and i feel like that has to be shepherd's mask so that's a piece of shepherd now i don't know now we could now okay let's go let's really quick get in some theories why would she be grabbing an n7 mask and caring now and i say that because if we look very closely in the image she has wrinkles liara Mm-hmm. If she has wrinkles, so that means time. that means that's it's been a hun- hundreds of years. So she could potentially be a matriarch, meaning she's in Not the. It's been that long. She has wrinkles. She was a little over a hundred years old in, when Mass Effect One starts. Uh, I believe she was one thirty, one forty ish, somewhere around there. She's or she was low hundreds. Which is like a baby in, in, in their years. Because they live to a thousand. And she has little... I'm staring at the picture. She has wrinkles. She has crow feet and wrinkles when she's smiling. So this is literally... Mm-hmm. This could be six, seven hundred years after. And then there she's looking at the new ship. Which looks like... Mm, what? A Krogan. A human and a Salarian. I don't know why she would be picking up N7 stuff. Maybe just tease at us, like, hey, a N7's of, a there's thing. There's a lot of speculation in the, the one in the middle. What, what's the speculation? Yeah. What's, this, what's the speculation? Uh, I mean, who, uh, maybe... Oh, the in the one in the middle, they don't know if it's a drill. They don't know if it's a human. It looks like a human. They don't know if... It, if like what it is but it's one of them <laughs> looks like a human to me yeah, a lot of people are saying either uh, it's like a, it could be a drill so i'm not sure i don't know i, I mean he, it's, he's it's definitely one of the, like, it's one of them they're humanoids so it's or, definitely one of like them. the original characters that you can get yeah i'll i'm very curious what's gonna happen here very curious <laughs> love it um uh and it, it doesn't look like we're in a prescribed place because there's two moons um so it's definitely not earth it's just there's just so much yeah there's just so much we're, we're post mass effect 3 uh everything's exploded it looks like they're trying to rebuild something and i really don't know why we're looking at an n7 thing because it's definitely been hundreds of years later so i'm not really sure what's going on but that's all for the announcements that we have and literally i could talk hours about what we saw about mass effect but i'm not gonna do that here we're gonna end full-on announcements there and we're gonna move on to the actual winners of mass effect of the sorry of the game awards so let's go over this let's go over this i won't start with the most exciting one because that seems kind of reductive so we'll start at the very beginning and we'll very quickly go through things we don't care about because you guys know us. I'm not gonna care about the you know esports games. I'll, I'll announce two one, but I don't think we need to actually go over like who it is. But um, starting with content creator of the year, surprising to me, um, v- Valkyrie wins uh, content creator of the year. Not much I can say about that, and I know Alex couldn't say much about it either. But very quickly, Valkyrie won. I could have swore Tim the Tatman would win that, um, and I was hoping for Alana Pierce because she's she does great work. But all good. Uh, we're going to skip most of the esports stuff because I'm not going to butcher all these names <laughs> and I don't know who any of these people are. Um, and uh, Surprising for me, most anticipated game out of Elden Ring, Halo Infinite, Horizon Forbidden West, God of War sequel, Resident Evil Village, and League of Legends comes um, Legends of Breath of the Wild sequel. Most anticipated game out of all that, Elden Ring wins. 
uh, go ahead and send Alex a refresh because we lost him. We lost him there, so I'm texting him to refresh his thing. Uh, best Arc Direction, Ghost of Shima, Final Fantasy VII Remake, Hades, and Ori, Will of the Wiz, Last of Us Part Two. Ghost of Shima wins Best Arc Direction. It makes sense. That game's beautiful. I love the colors, and I love the vibrance that it gives off. And it's one of the games that's very good at passive beauty. I know that's a strange word to say, but passive beauty. Speaking about essentially where you're just walking through planes and you can just look out and just see the world and how beautiful it is and, and its art that it's showing and it's showcasing. It's beautiful, beautiful. Uh, we we're going over best art direction, Alex, uh, just to fill you in where we're at. Um, and Ghost of Shima won that one. Uh, moving to uh, Games for Impact. Games for Impact. If found... Kentucky Route Zero TV Edition, Spirit Fair, Tell Me Why, Through Darkest of Times. I heard If Found was really good. Kentucky Route Zero was very good. I want to play Spirit Fair. It came to Game Pass, so I have it downloaded. I haven't played it yet, but I have it downloaded. And Tell Me Why won for Best Impact. Makes sense. I heard that was huge. The stars a transgender person, which is huge for that studio and a bunch of people that played the game. So good for everyone involved. Glad they won it. Alex, we're at best mobile game right now, Alex. And we have Among Us, Call of Duty Mobile, Genshin Impact, Legends of Runeterra, and Pokemon Cafe Mix. I forgot that was that even came out. I didn't even know that came out. I thought, I thought that was still, like, due. But, of course, Among Us won best mobile game. Good for them. Uh, no, nothing too exciting. Uh, nothing too shocking there. Best audio design. Doom Eternal, Half-Life Alex, Ghost of Tsushima, Resident Evil 3, and Last of Us Part 2. Last of Us Part 2 actually won it. And of course, for me, I think I'd say the same thing. Last of Us Part 2, best audio design by far. Um, best VR AR game. Dreams, Half-Life Alex, Marvel's Iron Man VR, Star Wars Guardians, Walking Dead, Saints and Sinners. Half-Life Alex wins. Makes sense. That was a beautiful VR game. And I wish I was able to play it. But it's exclusive to... I never the, got a chance to try it. Yeah, it's exclusive to... Um, I've, what is it called again? Uh, the Valve Index. So, like, no way I can play that. But hopefully it comes to PSVR one day. Mm. Let's see. And we're going to best community support. Apex Legends, Destiny 2, Fall Guys, Fortnite, No Man's Sky, and Valorant. And out of all that, Fall Guys wins best community support. Good for them. I, I could have swore uh, Fortnite or Valorant was going to take that away. But they wouldn't. Yeah, I didn't. I, I didn't see that one getting it, but uh, yeah, good. For them. Best debut game, Carrion, which was that crazy. You're like the alien in a spaceship eating everybody. Mortal Shell, which was the Dark Souls type game. Raji, which I played the demo for that. That was fun. Uh, Ruiki, I, I assume that's how you about it. And Phasmophobia. And Phasmophobia wins. That's a very popular Twitch game right now. And it's apparently terrifying. A lot of people playing the game. Interesting. Uh, best score, which is one of my favorite uh, categories. Because I, I, I am surprised. I'm re- not gonna lie. I am not because a little thing called nostalgia. And, and you know, I don't want to be that guy. But a little thing called nostalgia, I think, worked a lot here. Doom Eternal, Final Fantasy VII Remake, Hades, Ori Will was Last of Us Part Two, and Final Fantasy VII takes it. I agree, I, honestly, yeah, I, be- because of the orchestral, but Doom Eternal, very close there with uh, how close, how good that rocking, rock was. Um, that's what I am saying. Like, I wouldn't say either of those, but I was I figured like Doom would have won it over Final Fantasy, but mm-hmm. like you said, it has the nostalgic yeah it's got that nostalgia aspect everyone hearing the themes that they remember even the main thing and they get bonus points for orchestral like you you can almost never beat an orchestra with anything orchestral music is beautiful it's so moving i i i get it i need to buy the vinyl for that because it is a beautiful sounding game mm-hmm. innovation and in accessibility i believe this is a new uh category this year which 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 is very cool. Assassin's Creed Valhalla, Grounded, Hyper Dot, Last of Us Part Two, Watch Dogs Legions. Last of Us Part Two takes it de- deservedly so, because the accessibility menu in Last of Us Part Two is insane. Like you can yeah. color people if you yeah. need to, if you can't see them, if you have like low sight, even if you're um, 
uh, I think they made a way you, if you're blind, you can play the game. Uh, because it, there, there's an audio mode you can put the game in, and they basically talk. I think they talk to you and have audio signals to where people are so. and what's going on, yeah. which is which. What? I that is so cool that like Nuts. someone that can't see the game can still play it. Best ongoing game: Apex Legends, Destiny yeah. Two, Call of Duty Warzone, Fortnite, No Man's Sky. No Man's Sky took this, which I think I, I think oh, that, I think that means good. the community like really showed up for that one. I didn't think Warzone would win it because I do feel like a lot of people are, that's, that's ha- have soured. Thing. Yeah, yeah, I think a lot of people soured on No Man's Sky, or sorry, I, uh, Call I of Duty. Said Fortnite or Destiny. Yeah, I would. I, I I literally when it was being announced said the same thing. I was like, Destiny Fortnite takes this. And when he said No Man's Sky, I was like, what? <laughs> uh, but hey, it, they have a, a lot of updates, I guess, and they added yeah, a lot of modes lot for of free. Up for that, I guess. Yeah, and a lot of free stuff, too. Like, like just for buying the game, yeah, you get a lot of stuff. Um, best Sim strategy game, Crusader, uh, Crusader Kings, yeah. Desperado, Gears Tactics, Microsoft, and XCOM, and Microsoft Flight Simulator wins. Ooh, super weird category, because it's best sim and strategy that probably should be two separate categories but i i get it um but flight simulator wins yeah Yeah. best fighting game grand blue fantasy versus which i heard a lot of good stuff about mortal kombat 11 ultimate street fighter 5 champion one punch man under night in birth and under night in birth exe late cl dash r (laughs) nonsense name (laughs) but mortal kombat 11 wins not surprising here uh deservedly so because they have an insane amount of characters and people in that game uh moving on to best role-playing game final fantasy 7 remake genshin impact persona 5 royal wasteland 3 yakuza like a dragon of course final fantasy 7 remake wins this no surprise there i would have given it to persona I would, I would have, I a hundred percent give it to Persona. I a hundred percent thought. Uh, fi- it's crazy because I don't, I don't, I, I yes, it's uh, Final Fantasy is an RPG, but I don't consider it as a like, uh, like uh, an RPG. I don't know. I feel it's, like it's just. It's 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 very lin. It's that game was more like more linear than what i've seen in final fantasy i just i feel like persona 5 was completely more, more on the rpg style i like like it was, it was i don't know right yeah i know what you mean by that i will de- i would definitely say it's still an rpg of course but but yeah, I'm, I'm, it is it is an rpg i mean you get you get you do get to you know change your characters like like things around and stuff like that i just feel like it's i don't know it was to me it was less rpg it's definitely little, there's definitely less rpg mechanics than the original final fantasy 7 uh no doubt no, undoubtedly but they did keep the core essence of an rpg so i i think it still counts but i do see what you're saying there uh, persona 5 royal in my opinion is like times 10 a better game than final fantasy 7 remake but i understand final fantasy 7 remake winning first off final fantasy 7 remake isn't a hundred hours long so it's definitely a lot more accessible to more people so yeah. so i get it but yeah, a little disappointed to see that final fantasy 7 remake won that but hey good for them best indie game carrion fog eyes hades spelunky 2 and spirit fair hades takes it wasn't shocked here either because a lot of people have been talking about hades i haven't played it my dad actually is playing it right now and he loves it i need to i need to play it but i haven't had it i haven't had the inkling yet best multiplayer game animal crossing new horizons go ahead no, no, no. I was gonna say this one was a shock to me too. Mm-hmm. Animal Crossing: New Horizons, Among Us, Call of Duty: Warzone, Fall Guys, Ultimate Knockout, and Valorant. Among Us takes it. I would give it to Animal Crossing. I. Uh, it's it's hard for me. Animal Crossing does not have good multiplayer multiplayer elements, but it's good when it works. If that makes sense. Yeah, but it, it, I feel like it was more of a. It connected 
with people more than I like like I feel like you can do it was more of a commu- it, that was more of a community game than just among to me than among us I don't know it's hard for me it's hard for me for this one I personally go Animal Crossing here but I mean it, it for among us like how huge that game came out it just when it just came out of nowhere and the amount of people playing the game like I, I see what it makes guys, like it, but I guess I don't know if, and it's just I think it's just hard for me to see Among Us keep winning all these things where it, this game came out two years ago and nobody cared for it. Yeah, yeah, but I mean we're yeah I get it, but I like that aspect honestly. It's almost like the because like nothing changed about the game. It's just someone found it one day and it got huge on Twitch and a, and a lot of people into it. So I, I get like the idea of like eh, like this game comes out of nowhere and wins all the things, but I like that aspect honestly. Like it just comes out of nowhere and just yeah. wins all these awards. Like yes, thank you. Like like that's so cool. But do I agree that it wins? I don't know. I I haven't played it, so I don't really think I can even vote for it. I'd, I'd probably vote uh, her, either Animal Crossing or Valorant. I don't know. Mm. I don't know. Moving on to one of my favorite categories, best performance. A lot of uh, Last of Us here. <laughs> Ashley Johnson, Ellie. Yep. In Last of Us, of course. Laura Bailey, Abby, Last of Us. Dasuki Tsuji, Jin, Ghost of Shima. Logan Cunningham, Hades, and Hades. In Naji, Jeter, Miles Morales, Spider Man, Miles Morales. Winner is Laura Bailey, Abby, Last of Us Part 2. Finally, she won. She's been nominated so many times, and she finally won one. Abby. Uh, deservedly so, I think. I, and this is... Honestly, anyone could have won, and I wouldn't have been too mad, to be honest with you, because these are all incredible performances. But I think Abby's the one that stands out to be... Like, she was so set up to fail for this role, right? Like, this entry, oh, char- sure. this entry character... And I don't want to spoil it, but like this entry character, and she does this terrible thing, and then they. Haven't played Last of Us yet, then that's. I I don't want. Yeah, but I want. I don't want to ruin it just in case. Just in case. (laughs) I I kind of want to just to, but at at, like entry character that does this terrible thing, and then you almost end up empathizing near the end. Like that's such a. How do you sell that to somebody, especially if that's your favorite character? Especially if that's your favorite thing about that game, mm-hmm. it's insane, and they pull it off. Good for them. Best narrative. Yeah, it was definitely. It was. Yeah, no, for sure. Oh yeah, I didn't even let you speak on that. What What did you think? Did you like? Did you want them to no, I, to win? No, I completely. I, yeah, I completely agree because it was between mm-hmm. Ellie and Abby, and um, I feel like yeah, she did definitely deserved it for all the amount of shit that she got. Uh, yeah, yeah, she did get a lot of shit for that too, which is unfortunate, of course. Um, I do. I I kind of hope Laura saws it in half and gives Ashley Johnson the other half, cause like, they, cause like they're so good because of each other too, like cause they're just working off each other so well, cause they're they know each other so well. Like it's it's so good, so good. Yeah. Best narrative. Thirteen Sentinels, uh, a- Aegis Rim. Agus. Agus. Thank you, Agus Rim. Final Fantasy VII Remake, Ghost of Tsushima, Hades, Last of Us Part Two, Last of Us sweeps again, again. Last of Us Part Two sweeps best narrative. I'd give it to I'd give it to Last of Us here as well. I, I, there's not a nowhere close on this thing. Does it even touch Last of Us? So. Yeah. Best action adventure: Assassin's Creed Valhalla, Ghost of Tsushima, Spider Man, Ori, Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order. Which okay, <laughs> that came out of nowhere. And Last of Us Part Two, and again. Last of Us Part Two wins Best Action Adventure. Another category they win. Alex, is that is that who you'd see win here, or would you prefer something else? No, I, I would have gone with part, uh, Last of Us. Yeah, same here. I don't think the only thing that gets anywhere close is Spider Man for me, and mm-hmm. it's nowhere close. Yeah. Best Action Game: Doom Eternal, Hades, Half Life, Alex, Neo Two, Streets of Rage Four. Hades takes it. Good for them. I was surprised the, with this one. They're, ta- they're taking a lot. I've heard Ace is really good. I heard it's fantastic. Between that or Doom. Yeah, me too. Same here. I, I heard it's fantastic. So I don't. I when I hear it, I was like, no shock at one. Like I've heard, like the amount of people talking about that game, I'm not shocked. And I, it makes me want to play it. I just haven't. It's on Switch. Mm-hmm. Best family game. 
Animal, uh, this is essentially every year this is the nintendo category uh but this year it's a it's a little different animal crossing new horizons crash bandicoot 4 fall guys mario kart live home circuit minecraft dungeons and paper mario and animal crossing wins it makes sense best family game like that that's the first thing that comes to your mind for this it year animal crossing in the best time it did too yeah start right at march like the start of break that like everything. quarantine and everything got your mind off it perfect timing for a perfect game uh, fix the online though make it a little better <laughs> best game direction <laughs> final fantasy 7 remake ghost of Tsushima, hades half-life alex last of us part 2 alex shocker last of us part 2 wins again <laughs> yeah. i and again i give it to it here too best game direction yeah for sure last of us part yeah, 2 I, like nobody was expecting just completely switch around yeah like i don't think um i don't think any game comes anywhere close to direction if we're talking about like actual like sit down direct the scene direct how it flows like there hasn't been this good direction in a game since god of war with the with the no cut which is still a phenomenal thing and then alex the category the thing you come for the one that you fight for and the one that you want to see over everything game of the year the contenders animal crossing Doom Eternal, Final Fantasy VII, Ghost of Tsushima, Hades, Last of Us Part Two, and Last of Us Part Two wins again, again. I think they took. I think they took like almost every single category they were in, and I think there were like seven categories they were in. Look, yes. Jesus, they took everything. Now, Alex, do you, do you give it to out of this list? Do you give it to you? For sure. Same here. For sure here. And then again. Yeah, it's nowhere close to to the games listed here. I'm like, yeah, out of everything here, Last of Us Part Two, 100 percent took me in every way more better than than everything else. Love my time with it. Had, and I want more. Hopefully, they do some sort of DLC or something. Alex, we'll eventually do our 2020 Game of the Year, so we'll get into that later. This isn't necessarily what we think the Game of the Year is. It may be Last of Us Part Two, but that's not necessarily what we do. We'll do that probably. I think first week of January sounds good, maybe. Unless we're still busy with some games that came out uh, this year. First week in January sounds perfect for, mm-hmm. for what our game yeah, of the year we're was. Consider- we're counting games that we've played. Like, for example, since Ghost, uh, Ghost, Cyberpunk just came out, where am- are we counting that because it's still in December? Well, I don't like to be the rule guy with game of the year lists. Usually when I go to somebody... I well, of course I would count it. Um... I don't really it within the year. Yeah, I, I, I don't I'm not really a rules guy when it comes to game of the year. Like when I walk up to somebody and say, hey, what's your game of the year? I don't like go like, well, that didn't come out this year. But so like, yeah, you, I, I go go with whatever your gut says. Makes sense to you. Mm-hmm. Put it on the list and we'll have that ready for you. January first week, of January. Very excited for that. Unless we're busy, we'll put We'll make sure to tell you if we have to push back. But Alex. Mm. That was the 2020 Game Awards Showcase. That was every winner and every announcement. What do you think? Hey man, I mean, there was a lot of uh, surprises and a, and a lot of excitement. I liked it. I enjoyed my time with it. I liked how it flowed, even though I do think it's still a little long. Yeah, no, it was like, what, three hours long? It's so the, the three or four. It was... Uh, it was three and uh, ten o'clock. They said that they had like uh, they they were showing stuff like the the games and stuff. Oh, like that. I see. So I see. Okay. That's why I wasn't until eleven. I see. Got it. Okay. So it wasn't okay. So the whole thing was three about hours. three hours. So that's a, that's a tiny bit better, but it does feel long. But it's more passive, so I don't hate it. Like it is a passive enjoyment. Like I don't have to like mm-hmm. sit there and watch the whole thing. I can have it passively, like while I play a, a game, which I think is what I did for like the first few minutes, and then I switched. Uh, to just watching it full time when a big announcement started, but uh, all in all, I loved it. Uh, they, I do think they keep getting better, which is good. Yeah, like I don't think I've had a year yet where it's been worse than in the last year. And it wasn't. It, it was definitely wasn't uh, like bad compared compared because it was all digital. So do you, now? Do you think they'll do E three this way for next year? <sighs> Or do you think that one has still has to be kind of like, you know, you would have to be there? Or do you think they'll try to make it a, a digital event? Like this? Uh, Seeing maybe... maybe that's a hard question. I don't... This was a, 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 success, a success. 
Right. Yeah. I, that's a hard question. I don't know what, I don't know what they, it's like the pandemic over with. I don't know. Do, are people safe to go outside and be gross to each other? I don't know. Maybe it's digital next year. Maybe it's not. That's a hard question, especially right now. If you asked me in March when we would be done with this stuff, I would have said like June or July. Well, then I'll come back to you. And, and, we're, st- and we're still in December. So, I mean, <laughs> like I'm definitely not the guy, I don't think, to come up for that stuff. But if I had a, I mean, I would hope so. I hope we would be in a spot where we can just go out and not care about germs anymore. I mean, as of recording, they did approve the yeah. Pfizer vaccine for giving out to the general public. They did a, an emergency verification for the vaccine now. So hopefully we're done with all this stuff. I can't even pretend to know, but hopefully and i do hope we have more events like um you know e3 i hope uh, dice is able to have their thing even though i don't think that's going to be in person at all that's for sure going to be <laughs> like there's no chance that's going to be that's digital for yeah. sure alex that's the game awards 2020 i liked it you liked it not too much to talk about they they don't really change too too much it, it, the the flow is a little different i think but it's generally about the same like than it was the year prior so i enjoyed myself i liked my time with it i hope you did too if what tell us what you like what you didn't like in the comments below and remember we are the easy tubers we come to you every single friday with news that we think you should know about we are fan supported you have to go over to patreon.com slash easy there's plenty of tiers you can look through to get something that you want to you can of course give us only a dollar if you can afford it only if you can afford it remember only if you can afford it. these are trying times so we understand if you can't if you are a freebie don't worry you can go support us many of ways you can follow us on twitter follow us on instagram you can support us with the views or share us with a friend like comment subscribe all the good stuff and while this very nice week has passed us i want you all to take a second chill relax listen to listen to your like your favorite video for the week and get ready for next week when we join you again for our regularly scheduled programming of the easy trivia video game podcast we love you remember pregnant pause go achieve